Hello, brothers and sisters of Christ. Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Today we're going to talk about the perfect heart. So if you'll turn to 1 John chapter 2, verse 1, and we'll get started. Just get right into this. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now I want to stop there for a second and go off on a little bit of a rabbit trail. Propitiation. Okay? you got to understand what that word means. I had people trying to tell me, propitiation, God, Jesus is present tense, forgiven the sins of the whole world. That's not what prop propitiation means. Okay, if you look up propitiation in the Webster's 1828 dictionary, it'll say to be propitious. How many times have you looked up a word and it goes, it gives another word as a definition, then you have to look up another word? When I've done word studies in the Bibles, there's times where I've had to look up several words before to get the actual definition. So, propitiation is to be propitious. So then you look up propitious, and the definition of propitious is ready to forgive sins. Brothers and Christ, in our life as a Christian, we still need to come to God and fall before Him every day, confessing our sins to God and throwing our iniquities at the foot of the cross every day. And he's, the Bible says He's faithful to forgive us of our sins. But He's ready to forgive. And same thing with the lost world. He's ready to forgive the lost world. Revelation, you don't have to turn here, but Revelation 3.20, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and I will sup with him and he with me. I stand at the door and knock. He's ready to forgive the sins of the world. Okay. 2 Peter 3 9, we read, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God's heartfelt desires, He wants to see people get saved. My heartfelt desires, I want to see the lost world get saved, Brother Christ, and I pray that's your heartfelt desire, to see people get saved. Okay? But the word propitiation means ready to forgive. And it's a word only used for God because it's ready to forgive sins, and only God can forgive sins. And you read about Jesus Christ, a lot of times they got upset at Jesus Christ. Why? Because He was forgiving sins. Why? Because Jesus is God. Okay. Little rabbit trail there. Okay. But John, uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 3, And hereby know we that hereby we do know that we know him. If we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. The truth is not in him. Remember, Jesus is referred to as capital W word, the spoken word, and the lowercase w word is the written word. Okay, but John 14, 6 said, Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Evidence of salvation, the fruits of salvation, is what's your attitude towards this book? The King James Bible, for God's, per God's perfect written word in English. Okay. What's your attitude towards the commandments of God as a Christian? Oh, I like the world, and I like doing things the world's way. Remember the three enemies. I'm getting ahead of myself, but the three enemies that you have in this world is the, in this world, is the world, your flesh, and Satan. And Satan likes to use your flesh against you. He tries to use the world against you. All right? Those are your three enemies. All right? So if you don't have the truth in you, Jesus Christ in you, what are you hiding in your heart? Okay. A perfect heart is what I titled this study. A perfect heart. We're going to get there. Okay. 1 Corinthians 6.20 reads, For ye are bought with the price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Romans 12, 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Okay? There's a changed life that comes with salvation. 
It's guaranteed if you're truly saved. If it's not there, John is saying that he is a liar and the truth is not in him. Okay? 1 Corinthians 7.23 says, You are bought with a price. Be not ye the servants of men. You're bought with a price. You're supposed to be serving God. The truth is supposed to be in you. This truth is supposed to be in you. Okay? Hebrews 9.14 says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? You truly get saved, born again, brothers and Christ, we, we start trying to have a perfect heart with the Lord. And we're going to get into this perfect heart situation. But we're living for the Lord, not men, not the world. Okay, not, not the world, not the flesh, and not Satan, the lowercase g God of this world. 1 Thessalonians 1 9 says, For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye, how ye turn to God from idols to serve the living God. Okay? 1 Corinthians 7, 20, chapter 7, verse 23, when we read, You are bought with the price, be not the servants of men. You're bought with the price. Are you in Christ Jesus our Lord? John 15, 14 says, Ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. This is Jesus speaking. How many times you've heard people say, I'm the friend of Jesus. Jesus is my friend. He's my homeboy. They disrespect Jesus left and right while claiming Jesus is their friend. When I was lost, as friends, we thought it was funny to put each other down and laugh at each other and everything. And it's just, oh, it's just funny. But that's not something you do to a real friend. You don't put them down. You don't mock them. You don't name call. You don't belittle. Okay? But ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Where do we get God's commands? 1 Corinthians 16, 22, If a man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha. It's serious. If a man love not Je our Lord Jesus Christ, what is loving Jesus Christ? It's keeping His word. True evidence of true salvation, the fruits, is that you're doing your best to hide God's word in your heart and live it. Are we going to make mistakes? Absolutely. But what is the heart's which, what are you putting on your heart every day? What is your heart's desire? Is it for the world? Is it for the things of the flesh? Are you getting drawn into to playing Satan's game? That desire for, you know, uh, drama, 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 drama. Bickering, biting, backbiting, whispering, railing for railing, bearing false witness. Are you getting into that drama? Playing Satan's game? Is that where your heart is? What are you putting in your heart, brothers and sisters of Christ? Matthew 13, 30 says, Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I'll say to the reapers, Gather together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Okay? This day is not for the false converts and the, false, uh, the lost world. This is for brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay? God will deal with the false converts of the world. Right now, I'm addressing saved sinners. Okay. What we read there in 1 John chapter 2, verse 3, is he's talking about, hey, if they keep not his commandments, he's a liar, and the truth is not in him. That is true. Okay. But I'm addressing saved sinners who love the Lord by loving his commands. And I'm trying to warn the brethren of their first love and what it means to have a perfect heart. 1 John chapter 2, verse 5. But whosoever keepeth his word. Where do you get God's commandments? From his word. In him verily is the love of God perfected. Perfect heart. Perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk, even as he is walk. He walks. Notice it says the love of God is perfected. 
if a man love me, Jesus, we're getting ahead of myself, but Jesus said, if a man love me, he will keep my words. But whosoever keepeth his words in him, verily, is the love of God perfected? 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Why? Because John 14.23, Jesus says, Answered and said unto him, If any man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and will come unto him and make our abode with him. But whosoever keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. 2 Timothy 3.12 says, Yea, and all that will love God, or no, I'm sorry, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. When you start hiding God's word in your heart and you start living it, you're going to be set apart from this world. And you're going to suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall work, wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Paul talks about the words that you hear from us. You have not received them not as the words of men, but as the truth that they are the words of God. Okay? The word of God you're supposed to hide in your heart. John said, But whosoever keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Verse 14 in 2 Timothy 3. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child that has known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through the faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. The Bible says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. How does a man be perfect before God? It's your heart that needs to be perfect before God. And God looks at the heart, brothers and sisters of Christ. The Bible says, uh, judge not on the outward appearance, but judge righteous judgment. You look at the heart. Okay, if God looks at the heart, we look at your life, the fruits of what's coming from your heart. Are you just talking the talk? Or are you walking the walk? Your talk and your, your talk and the way you walk needs to line up. And a lot of times they don't. That's how we can tell the lost world from the saved. But brother, sister Christ, as a brother, sister in Christ, I'm addressing you as a saved sinner. There are times in your life that you start falling away and you start looking like the lost world. You start acting like the lost world. And we're going to get into that. What causes that? You don't hide God's word in your heart anymore. You've forgotten your first love. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study. Okay, notice it says, real quick, it says that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Your works need to line up with Scripture. Well, I'm doing this for Jesus, chapter and verse. They need to line up with Scripture. And you need to have a perfect heart with the Lord. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It tells you how to study the word of God. Rightly dividing it. But let's keep reading. 16. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. The words of men. Men's wisdom. The ways of the world. You're fled because the world will come knocking. I got an offer for you. I got a sales pitch. Your flesh will come knocking. Hey, I got an offer for you. I, I got a sales pitch for you. Satan will come to try to sift you as wheat. Looking to sift you as wheat, brothers and Christ. Come knocking. I've got an offer for you. If you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all these kingdoms of the world. Try to tempt Jesus. The body. 17. And their words will eat as doth a canker. 
of whom is Hermias and Philtius, who concerning the truth have erred. They once were standing for the truth, and now they've erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. They've turned from the book. They stopped hiding God's word in their heart. 1 Corinthians 7.23, okay, that we read earlier, servants of men. We're not supposed to be servants of men as far as they're our final authority and their wisdom is absolute truth. We're supposed to be servants to our brothers and sisters in Christ. And the way we're servants to the lost world is we preach the gospel to the lost world. We preach truth to the lost world. Okay, we do good. We overcome evil with good when it comes to this world. Okay, we be a light for Jesus Christ. But what it's talking about, the servants of men, it's talking about who's your final authority. 1 Corinthians 7.23, you're bought with a price. Be not ye the servants of men. It's talking about when it comes to salvation and when it comes to the final authority. Are you hiding Jesus Christ in your heart and his word in your heart? Are you being too busy trying to be the servants of men and not the servants of Jesus Christ first and foremost? 2 Timothy 2.19 Keep reading. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Truly saved and born again, you're sealed into the day of redemption. And remember, God knows who's his. God will deal with them. The false converts, the wolves in sheep's clothing, God's going to deal with them. Okay. But the Lord knoweth who is his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but King David said, If I hold iniquity in my heart, God will not hear me. What are you hiding in your heart, brothers and sisters in Christ? If you want to have a perfect heart with the Lord, you need to stop and ask yourself, in my day-to-day -day life, what am I hiding in my heart? It says here, depart from iniquity. But in, but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, good things, but also of wood and earth and some to honor, and some to dishonor. Which one are you, brother Jesus Christ? Are you hiding God's word in your heart? Or are you hiding iniquity in your heart? Are you hiding God's way in your, in your heart? Or are you hiding the world's way in your heart? Remember the three enemies, the world, your flesh, and Satan. Are you looking at things the way God looks at them? Are you holding the things that's important, is what God says is important? Or are you starting to fall in the trap of doing things Satan's way? Playing Satan's game? Holding things that Satan holds important? First mm -hmm. Corinthians 3.12 says, Now if any man build up this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, talks about the judgment seat of Christ. You have our works, Okay, every man's work is going to be judged. That is there. But what I have to believe this is talking about is you're going to have the body of Christ. You're going to have people in the body of Christ that it's going to be like that look like gold and silver, and you're going to have some that look like wood and earth. Okay. Have some to honor and some to dishonor. And these last days, remember the last step in the falling away before that man's sin is revealed is the falling away. The last step before the catching away, I'm sorry, the last step before the catching away of the body of Christ, before we get to go home, everyone goes home, we get to be one body. We're supposed to be that now, but it, it's, it's, it seems like it's impossible. Shouldn't be. But we're supposed to be one body. We're all supposed to be of the same mind, the same judgment, striving together, standing together. Don't stand, do it all to stand. Don't faint. Don't falter. But when we get to heaven, we're definitely going to be one body. Everybody's going to be of the same mind, the same judgment. But the last step, the last uh, sign, prophecy that God gives us right before the man of, sin, man of sin is revealed is there's going to be a falling away. Are you becoming part of the falling away? You get distracted by the world and you start hiding those things in your heart? What's going on in the world? Worldly things? The world's way of doing things? The world's way of excuses? Hide them in your heart? The flesh? 
hiding fleshly things in your heart? The lust of the flesh are these, and it goes through all these lusts of the flesh. A big thing lately, recently in the body of Christ is covetousness, which is idolatry. Are you holding covetousness in your heart and hiding covetousness in your heart, which is idolatry? Or are you hiding God's word in your heart and letting go of that covetousness, which is idolatry? Okay. Second Timothy 2.21, we read, If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. Sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Okay? But in a great house there's not only vessels of gold and of silver and of wood and earth. Some to honor, some to dishonor. But brother and sister Christ, when you give your life to Christ, you've got to get to the point where this isn't my home. This is not my home, brother and sister Christ. My home is in heaven. Jesus is in heaven preparing a place for me right now. This isn't my home. I need to honor the Lord with the life that I'm living. And whatever, uh, I'm trying to think of the right word that Paul used, whatever state that I'm in, I'm learned therewith to be content. Okay? To thank God and give God glory for whatever state I'm in. Whatever way He has me living, where He has me living, praise the Lord. Help me to live for you every day. Hide your word in my heart and live for you every day. Prepare it unto every good work. Okay? Psalms 119 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Works, walk, that I might not sin against thee. It's talking about works, it's talking about walk. When you see that prepared unto every good work in 2 Timothy 2.21, Prepared unto every good work, it's your walk. Anytime it talks about and uses the word walk, it's talking about physical action, how you live. Okay, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. How do you have a perfect heart with the Lord? This is what you hide in your heart. This is your heart's desire. Brothers and sisters Christ, how many times, was, we're at the beginning of the year for this study, so, but how many times a year do you get through the whole Bible, Brothers and sisters Christ? How often are you memorizing Scripture and putting them on your heart so you can use them when you get tempted by the world, by the flesh, by Satan? How many of you are actually taking this when it, it's not just memorizing it, I I've said this before, it's not just memorizing it, but you take that verse you've memorized and you hide it down here and you live it. You use it in the life that you're living for Jesus Christ. Psalms 119.9 says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Psalms 18.30 says, As for God, his way is perfect. Not the world's way. Not the flesh's way. Not Satan's way. But God's way. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in Him. Psalms 12.6 says, The word of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times. Remember what it said there, vessels of gold and silver? You know there's fake gold, fool's gold? There's fake metal that looks like silver? They've got to be tried. Is that gold genuine? Is that silver genuine? Is that person really truly hiding God's word in their heart and living it? You need to test yourself. The Bible says prove your own selves. Okay? You need to keep making sure every day that your life lines up with the word of God and that you're living for God and your heart is for the Lord. Okay? Psalm 66.10 reads, For thou, O God, hast proved us Thou hast tried us as silver is tried. There's times, what are people's attitude towards this book? Brother, sister Christ, when you, when you get corrected by a brother in Christ, through the word of God, what's your attitude? That silver is being tested. Is God's word in your heart? Now, I make mistakes, brother, sister Christ, I do. 
But what is your attitude? What's my attitude when someone comes to correct me? When someone comes to test, the, when God tests the silver that's supposed to be in my heart, when he tests me through brethren, through, te you know, it's something to think about, brothers of Christ. How do you react to the word of God? That's how I've always been able to, to spot out false converts. Okay, you don't judge on the outward appearance. If you see, I'll use something just as simple as a man with long hair. When I see a man with super long hair like a woman's hair, I don't just say that man's lost because he's got long hair. He's just flat out lost. No, I go over and I talk to him. I present this to him. He professes to be a Christian. I don't just say, oh, he's a fake false convert. What's his attitude towards the scriptures? I talk to him about how it's a shame for men to have long hair. And how long hair is likened to a man having a woman as a head covering versus God, Jesus Christ, as his head covering. It is a sin. People say it doesn't say a sin. It says it's a shame. Who, glo who, who glory in their shame. Whose God is their belly and who glory in their shame. Sin. God will not be ashamed of someone who's doing righteous. Who's righteous. He's ashamed of people who are sinning. They glory in their shame. It always goes back to Adam and Eve. When they were naked in the garden, they weren't ashamed because there was no law. But when the law came and said, hey, being naked is a sin, what were they? They were ashamed. So having long hair is a sin. Right? But what's his attitude towards it, brothers and sisters in Christ? That's the part that matters. What's the heart? That's what we need to start looking and judging, brothers and sisters. We need to be judging the heart. Not on the outward appearance. Not on brothers and sisters' flaws and past mistakes. Present tense, what's their heart? Do they have a love of the Lord? Do they have a love for His Word? Are they trying to live for Jesus Christ every day? They might fail some days, but their heart's desire is for the Lord. And they're hiding God's Word in their heart. What's His reaction? Brothers and Christ, when it comes to the world, when I hit them with the true plan of salvation, what's their reaction to it? Eternal security, what's their reaction to it? These professing Christians. Pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catching away the body of Christ. You say, I believe that with your lips, but in action you live every day as if Jesus Christ could come back today. That's the fruits of believing in the pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catching away the body of Christ. So if you say it, are you living it? You have brethren that have turned their back on living it, and it's just words. What's the reaction to the truth, brothers of Christ? What's your reaction to the truth? Dispensational teaching. Okay, the Godhead versus the Trinity. What's your attitude on absolute truth when we say the Godhead is God in one person, Jesus Christ? The Godhead is body, soul, and spirit. God the Father is the soul. Jesus is the body. The, Holy, the Spirit of God, God is the Spirit, the Spirit of God is the Holy Spirit. And when they come together, they come together in the person of Jesus Christ. God in one person, Jesus Christ. What's their attitude towards it? I've had people turn on me because they want the pagan trinity. They don't want the Godhead of the King James Bible. They like their God in three persons. They like their three gods, but yet it's one God. Where the Bible teaches there's only one capital G God, the Father. The soul is God. And God in one person, Jesus Christ. And the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has God the Father in him. There's the soul. He's the body. And he has the Holy Spirit in him. Body, soul, and spirit. Have, have to have a body, soul, and spirit to be a person. Thou hast proved us. Thou hast tried us as silver is tried, brothers and sisters of Christ, as silver is tried. What's your attitude towards being tried by God through the brethren? What's your attitude? Okay. When the Bible talks about having a per being perfect and having a perfect having a heart for the Lord, it's talking about that perfect man, that perfect heart is this. God's Word is perfect. Jesus Christ is perfect. Do you have Jesus Christ here? Salvation. 
repentance towards God, coming to God broken and having sorrow in your heart for your personal sins that you've sinned against God and throwing your iniquities at the foot of the cross. I hate this sin. Your attitude towards sin changes. I hate sin. I can't, I can't overcome sin on my own. There's nothing I can do. You believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, that Jesus is God manifest in the flesh and it's God's blood that's shed on the cross to pay for said sins. God made a way for you to, to get out of hell, of going to hell. You confess both in prayer and you ask God to save you. Are you hiding Jesus Christ in your heart? Did you truly get saved and born again? A new creature in Christ Jesus. Are you hiding God's word in your heart? Jesus is perfect. Are you hiding what what he did for you in your heart? Because some brethren, some of the answers to the pe brethren, because we're going to get into this real quick, why a brother in Christ falls away, the number one way you bring a brother in Christ back to a standing point is you remind him who it was that died for him. Who are you hiding in your heart? Who died for you? Remind him of salvation. Why he got saved. Who it is he serves. Not the world. Not the flesh. Not Satan. The lowercase g God of this world, the father of all the children of pride. That's the number one way that, I, and some, and if they get upset, if someone comes to me and tries to preach the salvation to me over again to try to remind me of how I got saved, and I just start blowing up and getting all prideful and, oh, I'm saved. What are you trying to do? Try to treat me like I'm lost? That's not the right attitude to have. Thank you, brother, for reminding me of the true plan of salvation. Why I'm saved. Why I. Ask God to let me be in ministry, to be a servant to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ first and foremost, and to the brethren second. But hiding God's Word is Jesus, who's perfect in your heart. The Word of God is perfect. As silver tried in the fire, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Matthew, um, I think it's Matthew, Mark, and Luke. I always get them mixed up, but in three of the Gospels it says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. When it talks about a man being perfect before God, are you hiding his, your, God's word, which is perfect, in your heart? Is Jesus, who is perfect, in your heart? Jesus said, I will come unto you. And then he said, it talks about sending the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, to be with you. Do you have Jesus in your heart? Are you hiding him in your heart? Are you remembering what He did every day for you? And that you're a servant of Jesus Christ, that you're bought with a price. What happens? Brethren, start, stop doing this and forgetting this. The three enemies that a brother and sister in Christ have is the world, the flesh, and Satan. These three things will, will do everything it can to keep God's Word from your heart and get you to forget who it is you serve and who it is that saved you. They'll try to, they'll, that, those three things in the world, Satan, the world, the ways of the world, and flesh, your flesh, will do everything it can to prevent you from having a perfect heart with the Lord with being per without being perfect. When the Bible says blameless, present your bodies a living sacrifice, blameless. It's not talking about sinless perfection, it's talking about the heart. Jesus Christ is perfect. When I stand before Jesus Christ in the judgment seat of Christ, I won't be at the great white throne. Why? Because Jesus is my Savior. He is perfect. He paid the price. His word is in my heart. His word is perfect. Right? Me? I'm not perfect at all. Far, far from it. Psalm 66, 16, we read, Come and hear. Psalm 66, 16. Come and hear, all ye that fear God. I'm going to get back to that second. And I will declare what he hath done for my soul. I cried unto him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. The fear of God. What happens when you stop fearing God? Verse 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. When you stop fearing God, you start putting things in your heart that doesn't belong there. You start holding iniquity in your heart, worldliness in your heart, Satan's attitude, Satan's way in your heart. 
pride. He's the father of all the children of pride. You start putting pride in your heart. When you stop fearing God, you start getting prideful and puffed up. Everything that's going on, where's the, where's the fear of God? Brother says Christ. All the railing that's going on, the backbiting, the gossip, the false, um, bearing false witness, the worldliness, trying to justify all these sins and pervert liberty and throw it under liberty. Where's the fear of God, brothers and sisters in Christ? I'm starting to see pride in people. And the first person i got to look at and judge is this one right here. Lord, I don't want pride in my heart. That's not something I'm supposed to be hiding in my heart. I'm supposed to be hiding God's Word in my heart. The Lord will not hear me. But verily God hath heard me. He hath attended to my voice and of my prayer. Why? Because King David wasn't prideful. He feared God. And he didn't hold iniquity in his heart. He gave it to the Lord. He repented. He humbled himself and repented. Brethren, are there things in your life that you still need to repent on? Things that you've done wrong, whether it's to the lost world, you need to go and say, I've done wrong to the lost world, and I need to apologize to them. Have you wronged brethren? And you need to go and apologize or repent? Have you Ultimately, the first person you go to is God. Lord, I am sorry I've been doing wrong. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thoughts that are coming in, Lord. Help me clear. I want your word in my heart. You're in my heart, Lord. I serve you, not this world. He feared God, humbled himself, and he didn't hold iniquity in his heart. Verse 20, Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. You know one of the examples of someone who gets prideful and puffed up, they start taking all the glory for themselves? Or they'll divide the glory and give it to you, brother, sister Christ, or give it to family members, or give it mainly a lot to themselves? I did this, and I did that, and I, me, me, I, 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 me. What does King David do here? 20, blessed be God, which hath turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. He gives God the glory. He gives God the praise. Now, what iniquity are you hiding in your heart, brother and sister Christ? What are you still holding on to that you haven't let go of? You need to replace it with this. You, if you're, like I said, this is for brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm treating everyone that says I'm a Christian. I'm going to try to trust you as a brother and sister in Christ, even though that's not always true. What are you hiding in your heart? What iniquity are you hiding in your heart? You want to have a perfect heart before the Lord? You better get that iniquity out of your heart. You better get that worldliness out of your heart. Satan, pride, you better get that pride out of your heart and humble yourself. We're in the last days, brother and sister Christ. I'm just pouring out my heart and soul to the brother and sister Christ. We're in the last days, the falling away. I'm tired of seeing brethren fall away because they start hiding pride in their heart. The world in their heart, doing things the world's way. We're going to get into some verses on that. Iniquity in their heart. You want to have a perfect heart with God? This is what you need to hide in your heart. I can't say it enough times, brothers and sisters of Christ. I can't say it enough times. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. What has got you to stop hiding God's word in your heart? Iniquity. Pride. Satan's way. Pride. Satan comes in, you start playing Satan's game, the pride game. The world. Sometimes it's not world like the world's way, but sometimes things can happen in the world, like what's going on right now over in um, Ukraine. A lot of things in the world is going to be going on, affecting you. We're still supposed to continue living for Jesus Christ. No, no man that warreth entangle himself with the affairs of this life that he may have proved to him who have called him to be a soldier. Kind of messed that up towards the end. But entangle himself with the affairs of this life. But I trust the Lord with everything that's going on out there, brothers and Christ. And I'm staying in his word, and I'm going to continue living for him no matter what my uh, living is. Okay, no matter what my state is. Poor, living out of my car, homeless, whatever my state is, 
living on grid, off grid, in the city, out of the city, in the countryside, whatever my state is, I'm going to live for Jesus Christ and hide His word in my heart. And I'm going to continue doing the work of the Lord. What, brother, sister, Christ, has gotten in the way and stopping and hindering you from hiding God's word in your heart? Now, when I said Jesus is in you, He is. He's perfect. But the Bible talks about Jesus being a light to the world. You are a light to the world because Jesus is in you. What's causing you to block that light? What are you allowing in your heart that's covering up that light that Jesus is supposed to be shining? And Jesus stops, is not shining as much in front of you. You're starting to look like the world, act like the world, talk like the world. Be distracted by the world. You're supposed to have a perfect heart. And when you start letting stuff in that's not supposed to be there, it dims the light. And you don't shine as bright. Isaiah 29, 13. Isaiah 29, 13. Wherefore the Lord said, Forasmuch as this people draw near with me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their hearts far from me. Are you starting to do that, brothers and sisters Christ? Are you starting to, with your lips, I love the Lord and everything, and, and you're forgetting your first love. You're not reading the Bible as often as you used to. You're not praying as often as you used to. You're not witnessing as often as you used to. You find yourself more engrossed in worldly things. You've forgotten to keep your eyes on heavenly things, things that are internal, and you're getting distracted by things that are temporal, temporary. But have removed their hearts far from me, and the fear towards me is taught by the precepts of men. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When men stop fearing God, it's because pride comes in. You know, there's men teaching you that you can be prideful without saying it, but you can be prideful and say you fear God at the same time. If you truly fear God, you're getting that pride out of your heart. Oh, no, 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 no. And their fear towards men is taught by the precepts of men. Another thing is, is I was, as a kid, I had a shirt. It was part of a battle building in a youth group. I had a t-shirt that said, N-O, God, K-N-O-W, Fear. No fear, no God. If true fear in God is, is just knowing Him. That's all that is. It's being taught by the precepts of men. No, fear in God means fearing God. When you start getting tempted, this is the world speaking, I'm here to give you an offer, knocking at your front door, I got an offer for you. That fear of God is what keeps you from not answering that door saying, I want nothing to do with the ways of the world. I'm doing things God's way. This is your flesh knocking, I got a great deal for you. What keeps you from answering that door, brother, says Christ? The fear of God. Chastisement. The fear of letting him down, disappointing him, failing the brethren, fearing God because you're supposed to be a servant to the brethren, loving your brothers and sisters in Christ. That's an action. How has the brethren been treating each other lately? Wake up call. Their fear, where's the fear of God? The number one reason brethren get so prideful and so puffed up is they stop fearing God. That's one of the things that's supposed to, it's in His Word. That the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You need to have that fear of God in your heart. People say, well, it talks about how we're to fear God. Yes, we're not to fear this world. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. It's talking about the world. The enemies, the world, the flesh, Satan. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and power and of a sound mind. You hide God's word in your heart. Memorizing scripture and hiding it in your heart. Sorry about that, the phone rang. Verse 14, Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder, for the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. And that's what's going on. Brothers, guys, I'm trying to preach truth to you. 
and you've got other brethren out there trying to preach truth to you, holding each other accountable to the body of Christ, and we're not being heard. Why? Because my biggest thing is I'm trying to get you to put God's Word in your heart. Not my words. Hide God's Word in your heart. Hide God's Word in your heart, brothers and Christ. We'll not listen to the wise men or the prudent men, but remember what it says in Romans 16.8. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ but their own bellies, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. When you have men that don't want truth, God will let them believe a lie. Remember the uh, prophets. A lying spirit went among the prophets and prophesied falsely to the kings because that's what he wanted. He wanted to hear lies. He didn't want the truth. You've got people coming around with good words and fear speeches, deceiving the hearts of the simple, brothers and sisters Christ. Deceiving the hearts of the simple. How do you keep from being simple? How do you keep from being simple according to that passage right there? I can't express it any harder than this. You don't want to be a simpleton? Then you need to know this book like you should know this book. You should be hiding God's Word in your heart and living it. Then when someone comes along and tells you, Oh, that gospel you got saved off of, the repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. I wasn't the really one. Get away from me, Satanist. Get away from me. Oh, you know that eternal security? It's not really true. You're really not sealed into the day of redemption. You weren't really bought with the pride. Get away from me, Satan. For thou art an offense unto me. For thou savest the things that be of God, not the things that be of men. And so on and so forth. You don't want to be easily deceived, brother, says Christ? Then you need to get into this book and hide it in your heart. And get iniquity out of your heart. Get pride out of your heart. Worldliness out of your heart. The three enemies, Jesus, uh, Satan, the father of all the children of pride. He's all for pride. You need to get pride out of your heart. Humble yourself. You need to get iniquity out of your heart. You need to get the world out of your heart, the ways of the world. And you need to get God's way in your heart. God's word in your heart. Righteous, good works. Living for the Lord. Colossians 2.1, we read, For I would that ye know what great conflict I have for you, and for them that at Laodicea, and for as many have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and of the Father, and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. The Holy Spirit comes in and will guide you into all truth. This truth, not all the world's truth, God's truth. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. Try to beguile you. Like I said, one of the biggest things I see in the body of Christ right now is they're, they're using liberty as a cloak for their sin. And they're hiding iniquity in their heart. And they're not hiding God's word in their heart. Another thing is pride. Big thing in pride. And I'm working on it with this guy right here, Brother Jesus Christ. Everything I'm talking about that I'm trying to point to you guys, don't think I'm just pointing at you. This man right here is number one that I judge first. I do any studies... I talk to the Lord, and I'm judging myself first. Lord, am I failing you here? Am I doing these things? Is my heart right with you in this area? First thing the world, flesh, Satan does is to take away the fear of the Lord. When it comes to making it where you don't have a perfect heart with the Lord anymore, taking God's word out of your heart, take it, it takes the fear out of your heart first. The fear of God. Psalms 111.10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and a good understanding have all they that do His commandments, do His commandments, His praise endureth forever. And I found that interesting. It says, His praise endureth forever. Praising God is correlated with doing His commandments. A lot of us like to go to pray, like when I was in the battle buildings, a false convert, the praise and worship service. It was all about our words, and, and yeah... But true praise for God is how you live your life, keeping His commandments. They go hand in hand. That's really praising God. How you live for Him. 
not just your words, but how you live for Him. Proverbs 1 7, we read, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. They don't want to hide God's word in their heart. They, want, they love their sin. They want to hide sin in their heart. They love the ways of the world. They want to hide the world in their heart. They love their pride. Psalms 51 through, you don't turn here, but Psalms 53 1. The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom of knowledge and but fools despise the wisdom of instruction so the lost world the fool has said in his heart there is no God corrupt are they and have done abominable iniquity what are they holding it hiding in their heart iniquity and there's none that doeth good now can a Christian act foolish can you tell a brother of Christ you're being foolish absolutely Galatians 3 1 we read oh foolish Galatians he didn't say they are a fool he said foolish Galatians you're acting like the lost world who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth crucified among you men come in with men's words men's wisdoms world's way trying to justify the flesh in some way and they're no longer hiding God's word in their heart. That's what the lost world does. That's why he says, oh foolish Galatians, you're not hiding God's word in your heart. You're not hiding Jesus in your heart. Have you forgotten how you got saved and who it was that saved you? And why you got saved? You need to be hiding that in your heart. You're not doing it, oh foolish Galatians. You're acting like the lost world. Proverbs 3, 7 says, Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. If you fear the Lord and humble yourself, you're going to throw your iniquities out. Today we throw it on the foot of the cross so God can come in and tell you, do this, don't do that, and you love it. You love God's commands. And you depart from evil. How does one depart from evil? Psalms 119.9 Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Are you hiding God's word in your heart? Do you have a perfect heart with the Lord, brother Jesus Christ? I'm hitting myself with this as much as you, especially in these last days. Proverbs 9.10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy is understanding. This is the verse I was talking about that gets so perverted by the lost world. To know God is to fear God. See, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy is understanding. So they're just saying the fear of God is just to know God. No, the knowledge of the, of the Holy gives us understanding. God wants us to understand Him. He wants to reveal Himself to us. And those who are truly saved... We have a close relationship with our Savior, Jesus Christ. A personal relationship. But it started at fearing the Lord. I need to get saved. I'm a sinner on my way to hell, and I deserve to go to hell for sinning against my Creator, and almighty, righteous God that's going to judge me one day, and that judgment is hell. It starts with fear. And then sorrow for those sins. That sorrow for the sins that are sending me to hell. Okay. Proverbs 15.33, the fear of the Lord is, inst is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. Before honor is humility. What's the opposite of fearing God? Being prideful and puffed up. How do you tr get back to fearing God, brothers and sisters Christ? You have to humble yourself. Real humbleness. Not just in words, but in deed. Proverbs 16.19, we're going to go through some verses real quick for this, to save time, but... Proverbs 16, 9, Better it is to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Proverbs 29, 23, A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. How do you honor God? By hiding His word in your heart and fearing Him? Colossians 3, 12, Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, Humbleness of mind. God, you're my wisdom. Your word is the wisdom. This is absolute truth. I have no wisdom of my own. Meekness, long-suffering. But there we see humbleness of mind. James 4.10, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. 
First thing, first time I humbled myself, true humbleness was at salvation. And you have brother, you have false converts out there trying to get you to turn your back on repentance as part of salvation, humbling yourself, throwing out the pride, going about to establish your own righteousness, and having sorrow for that sin that you've sinned against God, your personal sin. He shall lift you up. He gave me new life. Remember, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Paul warns time and time again to keep that old man dead and buried. Don't try to resurrect the old man. Continue as the new man. 1 Peter 5, 6 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Mighty hand of God. Fear of God. That he may exalt you in due time. The number one thing that will keep you from fearing God and hiding His Word in your heart is pride, brother, says Christ. That's the number one thing. Pride. Number two, iniquity. Those are two things. Pride and iniquity. They seem to go hand in hand. When you get called out on your iniquity, your sin, do you humble yourself and take the correction? Or do you get prideful and try to justify that sin? Something to think about, brother, says Christ. Isaiah, Isaiah 33, 6 says, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is His treasure. The fear of the Lord is not a bad thing. It's something you should treasure. Thank you, Lord, for opening my eyes, that I fear you, Lord, more than I fear this world, more than I fear this flesh, more than I fear Satan. I fear you, Lord, and I'm going to live for you. Is that what you're hiding in your heart, God's Word? The love of God is perfected in the heart when you hide His Word in your heart and you live for Him every day. No matter what's going on, because bad times can be right around the corner, brother, says Christ. No matter what's going on out there in the world, are you going to continue hiding God's Word in your heart and live for Him every day? No matter what state we're in. Colossians 2.18 Let no man beguile you of your reward and voluntary, in a voluntary humility and worship of angels and, and, introducing into those things which he hath not seen vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, brothers and sisters of Christ. What I want to talk about is it says voluntary, voluntary humility. You know what it means to be Voluntary. Perceive from choice or free will. What happens when God wants you to have humility when it's not convenient or easy? It's not voluntary. God's saying, here's the situation. It's going to cost you. It's going to be hard. It might even be painful. But I need you to humble yourself. They're going to start calling you names. You stand for my word. You preach absolute truth. They're going to start calling you names. They're going to start pointing you down. They're going to start bearing false witness against you. They're going to start doing all this stuff. You're going to have brethren that you love with all your heart turn their back on you. Through it all, are you going to humble yourself? Are you going to start playing Satan's game and acting like them? Or are you going to humble yourself? I'm talking to me. I need to humble myself. And for you, brothers and Christ, what that verse is talking about is you can have people that can show it's not fake humbleness. What it is is it's voluntary humbleness. It's when it's easy. I can humble myself when it's easy. But when it's hard, you look at those people that have this humility that they seem like, well, oh, look, they have humility. Look at it. Is it voluntary? Is it only when it's easy? Or are they humbling themselves when it's hard? A good example of this, Moses. It's not in my notes, but Moses. When they came and was yelling about Aaron and he shouldn't be the only one that's the priesthood and everything, he would bow his face to the ground. He would hit the ground and bow before him. They were 100% in the wrong. Moses was angry with how they were acting, but he humbled himself before God and before those people. He didn't act like them. He didn't let their attitude change who he was. He did eventually when it came to hitting the rock the second time. It does get to you, brothers. We do fail sometimes. But true humility, the true test of humility is when it's hard, when it's painful, when it's going to cost you. Okay. They will not have it when it comes to where it costs them, when it's going to be painful. 
They have good excuses for not having it, or good excuses for acting the way they do and claim it's still humbleness when it isn't. The true test of humbleness is when it is hard. The true test of charity is self-sacrifice, when it costs you, when it's hard, and you might suffer. True test of charity. Okay, fleshly mind equals man's wisdom, what we've read there, okay? 1 Corinthians 3.19 says, For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. It goes back to foolishness. You can be foolish as a Christian, brother says Christ. You can start acting like the world and holding the world's way and world's wisdom, the flesh, holding iniquity in your heart, holding pride in your heart, or the ways of the world in your heart. That the world is more important than serving the Lord. Where we're heading, our eternal destination this present blink of an eye existence compared to all of eternity becomes more important than eternity. Colossians 2.5 reads, For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in spirit. Though I be absent from you in the flesh, this is Paul, I be, yet I'm with you in spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Their actions, their faith is backed by their actions. Steadfastness. Beholding your order, being in order together, striving together of the same mind, of the same judgment. How do you think Paul would react to the church today? Yeah, verse 6. We're taught all of the same mind, the same judgment. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. You hide this in your heart, and you're going to walk in him. Rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Remember? Praising God goes, uh, and getting thankful and giving God glory seems to go hand in hand with obeying his commands. The more you get, the more you line up with the scriptures, the closer you get to Jesus Christ. The stronger your relationship gets, the more you obey his commands. It's not about you obey His commands to be to get saved. You obey His commands because you are saved. And you want that relationship with Jesus Christ. You don't want anything in this world in this heart except the Lord Jesus Christ and His Word and humbleness, charity. Rooted and built up in Him, established in the faith, as ye have been taught, as ye have been taught, not man's wisdom, God's word, not man's word, not the world's word, not the world's way, God's way. Have you been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving? Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. What happens? You let the world come in. And you start getting you start spoiling your heart. You let sin and iniquity come in, you start spoiling your heart. You let pride come in. Satan. Not that Satan actually comes in, but that's Satan's way. Pride. He's the father of pride. Starts spoiling you. Philosophy. Vain deceit. After the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world. Verse 8 is what will destroy a brother in Christ. The world comes a-knocking. Now this is the world here. I got, I got, a, I got a deal for you. I got, I got, I got something you might like. Sorry, I'm not even answering the door. I'm sticking with the scriptures. You know who knocked on my heart? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone will come in, remember that verse? Jesus is the door, but he's also the one knocking at the door. I answered that door. And that's the door I want to answer every day. I'm not talking about trying to be saved every day. I'm talking about living a life of Christ. Jesus knocks and says, hey, why aren't you doing this? Hey, you need to do that. That's the door I want to be listening to. Not the door of the world. Hello? But the flesh of pride. No. Okay. Be careful what door you're answering and who you're letting into your heart. The door of your heart. Who you're letting in. And what you're letting in. Romans 12.1 I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, which we read. Let's keep reading. And be not conformed to this world. 
Hey, I, I think, you know, you, you, you're standing out too much, and we got a way to make you blend in a little bit better. The world comes a-knocking. No, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. When you hide God's word in your heart, and you humble yourself, and you have charity, and you have Jesus Christ in you, guiding you, the Holy Spirit teaching you, warning you, protecting you, what's going on in the world, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more high than he ought to think. Paul's always warning about pride. Be careful. But to think soberly, humbly. That's soberly. You're humble. Right? According as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. How do we prove action what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God? By hiding God's word in your heart, which means that you are living it. That's how you prove it. If you're truly hiding God's word in your heart, it's going to reflect by the life that you're living, brothers and sisters of Christ. And we need to crack down hardcore in our lives and make sure that we're not becoming part of the falling away and we're standing firm to God's word and living it and being a living testimony, a light for Jesus Christ to the world. What are you hiding in your heart? I'm going to keep asking you that, brothers and Christ, and you need to start asking yourself, what am I hiding in my heart? Do I have a perfect heart with the Lord? Bearing good fruit, fearing God, and, sh and eschewing evil. That's how you prove that you have a perfect heart with the Lord. Bearing good fruit, good works. We talked about in many verses, works, walks, how, you, how your walk is. The works, obeying the commandments of God. Okay. Matthew 7.20 says, Whereby their fruits ye shall know them. It's not just for us, brother. We always think it's for us so we can tell who's a true Christian, who's a false Christian. But it's also to be a light to the world. They look at you and go, that person there, the Christians were first called Christians in Antioch. They could look at Paul. They could look at John. They looked at Peter. They look at Titus. They look at Timothy. They look at Silas. At one time, Barnabas, before he fell. And some of the other brethren that talks about who the hell they fell. They looked at him and said, they saw Jesus in him. That man follows Jesus Christ. They saw Jesus in him. That man's a Christian. By the fruits you shall know them. Brothers and sisters in Christ, a perfect heart with the Lord is what I desire for you, for me first, and for you second. Okay? I want us all to have a perfect heart with the Lord. Be careful what you're hiding in your heart. When the Bible says abstain from all appearance of evil, it means all appearance of evil. Do your best to get all of it out. I hardly go into town anymore as far as uh, I try to gospel track and everything, but the wickedness is everywhere. Do your best, to, if, whenever possible, to abstain from all appearance of evil. Okay? And I'm going to leave you with this verse, Philippians 4.8. Remember, what are you hiding in your heart? Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, I should hold this up when I say that. Finally, brethren, what sort of things are true? What sort of things are honest? What sort of things are just? What sort of things are pure? What sort of things are lovely? What sort of things are good report? If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Now, I can't hold Jesus up physically, but you could also hold Jesus up as you're reading that. Are you thinking on Jesus? Perfect. Virtue. Praise. Think on these things. A seminal string band, like I said, I love their song where they sing. It says, um, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely and of good report. If there be any virtue, any praise, think on these things. Think on these things. If there be any virtue, if they glorify God and lift up my Lord. Think on these things, for they will not hurt you. And through it all, you'll be closer to God. You're stumbling through life, your thoughts you're not gauging. The things that you think on become those where you trod. 
and the thoughts of your heart. The battle is raging. Will you please your flesh or will you please God? The battle is raging. This is this is the world. This is the flesh. This is Satan. This pride, world, flesh, Satan, pride, world, flesh. And you're like, Ugh. this is the Lord Jesus. Come in, please, please. It's a battle, brother, sister, Christ. Paul talks about putting down the flesh every day. You gotta put the flesh down. There's a battle raging. Our battle is spiritual, not physical. Okay? But there's good hymns. Get some hymns memorized. Okay? Sing and praise the Lord. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, whatever things are pure, I'm sorry, whatever things are true, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus and his word. What sort of things are honest? Jesus and his word. What sort of things are just? Jesus and his word. What sort of things are pure? Tried in the fire, se uh, the furnace of fire seven times. As silver tried in the furnace of fire. Jesus Christ. Okay? He is pure. He was a perfect lamb, innocent. Took on the sins of the world. The cost, the cost of sins of the world. What sort of things are lovely? Do you love God's word? Jesus said, if a man love me, he'll keep my words. What sort of things are lovely? What sort of things are good report? If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Brother Jesus Christ, please pray for me. I'm praying for you. And I want to throw this out there real quick because I keep talking about your, God's Word in your heart. Hide God's Word in your heart. I want to throw this out there real quick. If you need a King James Bible, if you have an old one that's falling apart and you can't afford a nice one, or you don't have a King James Bible, contact this ministry through the email, ministry email, and we will, I'll do it. If God gives me the authority and the power, I will do everything I can to get you a King James Bible. Okay? Regardless of what country, but right now things are heating up. But right now, you need a Bible? Let me know. Okay? So grace and peace again. Grace and peace is what I want for you, brothers and sisters of Christ. And we're only going to have that if you're hiding Jesus in your heart and His Word. It's the only way we're going to have grace and peace among the body of Christ. Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.